aside from the fact that I'm still alive. None of this surprises me. Technology is stronger. The weak got weaker. Computers. Robots. Oh, unmanned armies. And no one ever asked. What happens when the enemy steals the keys? And the things they built to keep us safe are turned against us. That's when they figured it out. They'll always need men like us. For those who are willing to do what others cannot. <laughs> Welcome back to day two of the Nonic conference. Um, this video that you just saw was actually produced, um, well, Call of Duty, as you know, is, uh, was created by Activision, which our next speaker counts on as one of his uh, big clients. In fact, he's somewhat of a guru on marketing and branding generally. Uh, prior to this experience, he was actually the vice president of Gucci when Tom Ford uh, was still there. Um, and in addition to all of this, he's, a great, he's, he's very passionate about gardening and he's promised that if you guys give him a loud round of applause at the end of his speech, he'll do a backflip off the stage. So without any further ado, I'll present you to our next speaker, which is Dante Simpson. Thank you. Now guys, if you believe that backflip off the stage thing, <laughs> we're all in trouble. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. I'm going to start this uh, presentation. And this is going to be informal, so everybody kick back, relax. Um, we're not going to do this so buttoned up today. Uh, but I want to start this the same way that I'm going to end it. I want to say thank you to the fine people uh, that, that are behind this entire conference, uh, the Nomic Conference. Um, I want to say thank you to you guys for coming out. And wherever that camera is streaming live, we want to say thank you to you guys from around the world tuning in. Uh, so I'm going to take this moment to introduce you guys to Eon Interactive. Uh, some of you guys might be familiar with what we do, who we are, uh, what we've done. And that's great. Uh, if you do know a little bit about us, we're going to kind of roll back the, uh, the curtain and give you some behind the scenes things that we're actually doing. And if you don't know about us, you're going to learn today. <laughs> so, uh, so definitely take notes uh, and, and, and get familiar with what we do. Um, but we work within the perspectives of the pro gaming space, uh, eSports as we call it, uh, from a uh, media content production component. Uh, we work from a marketing campaigning component, branded entertainment, and advertising. So we're all of that rolled into one within this vast gaming community that, that we're all here representing. So, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> all right. Um, com competitive gaming. We might need this. Forgive me. Uh, com competitive gaming is a huge part of the culture, but is often overlooked 
wonderful. They told me not to touch anything. <laughs> and this is what happens, I promise. Perfect. I apologize for that, guys. Um, but competitive gaming uh, is, is a huge part of this video game culture, but is often overlooked by the, by the mainstream audience. Within the competitive space, you've got a couple primary brands. Think your Call of Duties, think your Halos, think your StarCraft, StarCraft II, your League of Legends. Those are signature brands within this competitive space. Um, and developers are doing everything that they do, that, 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 excuse me, that they can to optimize the performance within this space. Um, if you're going to broadcast, for example, Xbox on a high quality, you're typically going to do that through a PC. But what I want to let you guys know um, is the next generation of the console, you guys are going to start to see some live streaming taking place. Um, this is going to be huge for the community and it's going to change everything about the eSports gaming community as we know it today. Um, so with verticals, as I mentioned, in advertising, development, content production, professional team, and talent management, um, as well as marketing, please allow me to introduce you guys to Eon Interactive. I would love to introduce you guys to Eon Interactive, one moment. <laughs> Let's try this again. Perfect. And I'm gonna talk to you from the team aspect right now. So we're, we're talking our eSports team brand. Um, <coughs> Eon is actually ha host, uh, uh, hosts three of the top 10 most viewed videos on Machinima Respawn. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Machinima. Uh, look them up, M-A-C-H-I-N-A uh, dot com. Wonderful group of people, colleagues of ours. Um, and for those of you that are not familiar, they actually have about 1.3 to 1.4 billion impressions. That's with a B on a monthly basis. Uh, they are what we like to call one of the purveyors of the esports uh, category. So we actually host under our umbrella three of the top 10 most viewed. Um, for all of you Call of Duty enthusiasts, we actually have the most viewed montage, Call of Duty montage, in the history of YouTube. Um, we, uh, one of the top three most watched Call of Duty series. And just to give you guys a sense, if you guys remember PewDiePie uh, from yesterday, um, and you know the, the tremendous job that he did within the horror category, um, we actually do that same type of content production, uh, original content production, uh, from a lot of these esports categories. So we are actually the voice, the influencers of, for example, your Call of Duty title uh, w w within the digital space. We actually manage, from a team perspective, the most successful Call of Duty team in history. Uh, for example, um, if you guys are familiar with, uh, with the XB tournament that took place in 2011, the million dollar uh, Call of Duty tournament, um, one of the Eon teams actually won that. Um, and when I say the most successful, I mean from a wins perspective, as well as from the contribution on behalf of Call of Duty to this space. The impressions that we've garnered for that brand, amongst others, and, 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 and please don't get lost in, in this description, we work with many brands, but I'm just speaking towards the Call of Duty as the stats speak towards that. Um, and when you say where are we right now, we're operating in 175 countries. Uh, so when brands reach out to us, it's, it's primarily because of our engagement, engagement time, and our reach. So we, we are currently um, uh, in those countries at this point. When, when you want to understand who we are and what we deliver, for any of you that are familiar with ESPN, for example, we are the ESPN of this game space. So when you say, what do we offer? We provide uh, uh, our fans with gameplay, so in-game, uh, uh, execution, uh, we, we provide that to them. Pro tips, everyone wants to be, for example, uh, the best within their group. No matter if you're a gold uh, category player, a silver category player, or you're just a weekend warrior at this Call of Duty thing, or, or, or at any games in general, uh, they come to us for those tips to basically speak to them about how to become uh, better, at least amongst their peers, excuse me. Um, Game news, um, if, if any of you guys were at E3, uh, we're always at PAX, we're, we're, we're at most of your major gaming events globally. Um, we always provide a behind the scenes uh, uh, um, exposure to what's actually going on with these events. Again, on a monthly basis, um, 
50 to 60 million views just from this type of category alone. So, you know, and when I say that, I mean the gaming news category. We do uh, game hype promos, your top five plays, as well as your esports product reviews. We always like to remind uh, everybody when we speak, obviously we are in a room full of developers, designers, brilliant minds within this space, uh, but we also speak towards the accessories space within gaming, your headsets, your controllers, things of that nature. So oftentimes we hear uh, designers speak about marketers and not quite understand what we do, but everybody in this room can benefit from the efforts that we provide, whether it's, we call it WOM, word of mouth campaigns, uh, your buzz campaigns, uh, you know, I actually spoke with an individual who has created several apps even, not even in the competitive space. And, and he always, he actually questioned, you know, the app that meant the most to him, for example, had some of the, 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 the fewest downloads. Um, whereas he's created other apps that have, uh, that have been highly successful. A lot of that comes from your buzz marketing campaigns and things of that nature. So we speak towards that space. Um, as I was introduced uh, so eloquently, uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you a little bit about who I am. Uh, personally. I represent a, a team of individuals, both gamers and corporate media types. Um, I'm going to introduce you to Dale Petrowski. Uh, Dale actually sits on our board. He's our lead advisor. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Dale, but uh, Dale was actually an appointee uh, in the White House uh, to Ronald Reagan. He was a part of that administration uh, in, in the U.S. Uh, Dale also went on to become an executive, uh, if we have any Major League fans, Major League Baseball fans, of the Texas Rangers. Uh, he was a, a, a vice president there and actually left uh, and got the distinct opportunity to serve as the president of Major League Baseball's Hall of Fame. Um, I tell you that so that you can get a sense of what we're looking to build here. He sits on our board. Um, people like Mary McKay, uh, she's represented, if we have any football fans, uh, American football fans here, Emmett Smith. Uh, she, she created endorsements for him and, and, and created his brand, as well as many names that, 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 that I, could, I could throw out to you that if you're familiar with, uh, with the space, uh, she represented. Uh, but our two leads, uh, uh, the CEOs uh, and, and my partners, Edion Interactive, are actually both gamers. Nobody can speak towards the space like those who are actually active within it. Um, so if you're familiar, and you'll hear me uh, throughout the speech throw out some gamer tags, Hastro and Optic Hex, uh, Hector Rodriguez being Optic Hex, uh, Hastro being Michael Rufiel, serve as our CEOs, and actually came up with this brilliant idea of, uh, of creating Eon Interactive. Uh, so like most professional sports success, uh, there's a team behind the scenes. Uh, not only do we need the game designers, the game platforms, the game players, but we also need the marketers uh, to help us grow. So as we see more and more publishers and game, developing studi game development studios uh, creating their games with esports or professional gaming in mind, <coughs> It is apparent to our group that there is a uh, need for synergies with brands to elevate the competition, uh, as, as well as the environment around professional gaming. Uh, there are many instances when marketing dollars uh, have, for example, helped uh, enhance the, the, the engagement in the watch experience. We're in Spain, so help me out. The, uh, the stadium where Barcelona plays. Camp, Camp Nou, am I correct? Perfect, Camp Nou. Um, would Chem now be the same, and from what I understand, it's beautiful grounds, well manicured, beautiful stadium. Would it be the same without branded entertainment? Um, there's brands scattered throughout that, that, that space, and we certainly look to bring the brand engagement to sports, much like Barcelona has done uh, with their soccer team. Uh, our team at Inter Eon Interactive is working hard to make the eSports e fan experience uh, better through effective engagement and effective branding. Um, so I've been in this marketing business for about 15 years. Um, as, as we heard at the introduction, I, I was with Gucci uh, and I, I was an executive with, uh, with Sony BMG uh, prior to coming and, and, and joining this team. In both, in both cases, I was a part of a team that was a part of brand build. Uh, that's definitely what we're looking to do here and I consider myself a dreamer, a builder, um, and, and certainly a thinker. But I want to give you an example of what I mean by brand build. This fell out again, so we're going to hope that this still works. I don't know if we have any skateboard fans in the building. Um, if there are any skateboard fans, you perfect. There we go. You might have heard of, uh, of Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk, uh, signature within this space, has built an enterprise. I'll be honest with you. I actually went into a, 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 an office supply space. I saw some jump drives and different things, and they were in the forms of skateboards. Um, and it had his signature. How does that fit? 
he's been able to transcend his market and what we consider to be standard within the skateboarding industry to all of a sudden be in a, in, in a staples type of space. And if you Google him and find out who he's worked with, it's tremendous. He's truly created an enterprise. Um, and we will notice, and, and, and this is Tony, not only has he done stuff in, in, in the finished goods space, but he's actually uh, also come into our space. Um, as, as you might see here, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, for example, HD. A lot of these guys uh, look to come into our gaming world, and, and, and we certainly welcome them uh, um, if they're coming for the right purposes. <laughs> but, uh, but, but Tony is an example of, of a person who turned into a brand because of the relationships that he had. Um, I'm sure if, if there are any golf fans uh, in, in the building, you might have heard of, uh, of Eldridge. Um, you might know him better as Tiger, Tiger Woods. Uh, he actually is another great example of an individual within a sports space that suddenly uh, uh, got brands and stood behind brands, both in our gaming space and, and beyond, um, and, and it helped build, build his overall global brand. I mentioned a couple people that you might have heard of, but how many of you, of you guys have actually heard of the gamer T Squared? Does that name mean anything to anybody here? Okay. Well, I want to introduce you guys to Tom Taylor. Uh, Gamertag T squared. Again, part of this entire relationship is how do we partner or how do we marry influencers within our space to make them purveyors of the space? There's something that you guys might not have known. Uh, Dr. Pepper loves this gaming, this, th th this gaming world of ours. Um, they work with Major League Gaming uh, and, and they work with, with multiple and varying outlets within this space. What you guys might not have known is that they created 175 million branded bottles for circulation, benefiting this gaming space. You ask how? They actually used T-squared. And they actually incorporated him into their packaging. Again, 175 million bottles of this went out, um, basically integrating them and endearing them within our space. We often say it's, it's great to provide money and, and, and have a financial infusion in the space, but do you really care about what we're doing? Do you care about the designers that, 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 that are, because your name does not have to be in forefront. So do you really care about what we're doing? And if so, how can we engage through your product uh, to actually bring our products and our dreams to life? So those are a couple of examples of, uh, of, of some individuals that, that we do know and some that we might not uh, and, and, and how this entire thing works. So. As digital platforms continue to grow, or even outgrow expectation, uh, the need for consumer interaction through games and the networks and channels they provide has exploded. The strength of this network and the necessary relationships it's created has uh, created a fresh view of an engagement for the consumer. Sales increase, the term gamer is more broad than ever before, uh, but there's one aspect of the game that has not been explored yet, uh, and that would be in-game advertisements. Uh, we had an opportunity to, to, uh, to, to hear from Josh Williams on yesterday uh, with Microsoft. Uh, Josh might be familiar, and you guys might be aware that Microsoft actually purchased a brand called Massive uh, several years ago, and they tried to foray into this space. Um, it's an untapped market from a global perspective right now, <coughs> but I'll give you an example. When, when, when we say in-game advertisements, just a way, and, and we're not talking about anything cheesy, uh, or anything like that, but basically a, a way that a brand can fuse their title within a game in a non-intrusive manner. That's the key to all of this. So you're looking at advertisements uh, from companies by, uh, excuse me, uh, for, for example, billboards in a racing game, uh, um, vending machines within a, a, a shooter game, a futuristic game, for example, using McDonald's, but an actual futuristic v version of a McDonald's logo. That type of true infusion into, um, <coughs> excuse me, in, in, into, the, uh, into the game itself. Um, and this, as, as I mentioned, is an underused market, but uh, video games have reached beyond the adolescent male. And obviously, uh, that, that was stated to us by Mark with Able Gable Gamers on yesterday. Um, if you look at the gaming community, you're looking at uh, such a large percent being over the age of 50, a larger percentage than that that's under the age of 18. So again, as you guys are creating your games, developing, as he mentioned, if you have an avatar of who your gamer is uh, or, or who, you, who your core market is, you might just want to X that because it, it's just not the case. Um, 
So uh, video games have reached beyond adolescent males into a mainstream entertainment medium that touches every segment of population. Uh, despite this, advertisers continue to underutilize video games um, as an advertising vehicle. This is slowly changing as games are transferring now to online. So if you take a look, 2012, you're looking at about 3.1 billion in in-game advertisements. Um, in a mere four years, to be honest with you, this number is going to change dramatically. Um, it's, it's projected that in 2016, we're looking at about $7.2 billion in this industry. Um, advertisers are, are now coming, um, and, and they're coming fast. So this is something that we're noticing um, as, as we're receiving the calls, and, and, and we're certainly talking to people as a way. And we're not talking pre-rolls, we're not talking mid-rolls, we're not talking overlays, but we're talking true integration that you can't fast forward through, that you can't skip through. And obviously, they're losing those components with television, um, you know, with the DVR component, the ability to, to fast forward through televisions or skip ads that are pre-rolls. They're finding this to be a, a, an incredible option from the, for them. Uh, so from the identification of social gaming, consumer gaming, uh, and the competitive professional gaming, these channels are developing gaming concepts and the way that it, consumers are di digesting information. Um, Eon Interactive works to speak for these gamers while simultaneously giving brands a premier voice within this distinctive space. Um, some of today's most advanced online strategies are, are actually uh, being applied in many cases and developed within the video game industry. Uh, the digital environment is a perfect place to market a consumer product, uh, and such a diverse target market uh, has, has, has never congregated in one space prior to the web. Uh, the powerful combination of digital advertising a digital product and a digital environment has meant that game marketers have a greater ability to measure the effectiveness of their advertising, uh, tracking at least some portion of sales and consumer lifetime values, uh, your CLVs, um, <coughs> in ways that are still elusive to other marketers. So video game marketers strive to build their brands, but also measure the real world of effectiveness of those campaigns and the return of their marketing efforts. Um, <coughs> And this is much detailed than any direct marketers or any other channel of advertising and, and, and what they can offer. So uh, this yield, uh, and this is yielded data that has changed the way that we approach brand marketing. In addition to the digital marketing platforms and the video game industry, eSports events um, and associated media um, offer even more digital branded opportunities uh, that are evident in ver various professional sports around the globe. I want to talk to you guys about three areas specifically. And we're going to take a look at the numbers. Uh, take a look at South Korea. Uh, if you look at all of their sports combined, uh, the, the, the number two largest sport within that market is actually this eSports category. Uh, they're looking at 20,000 live event attendees with 700,000 concurrent broadcast views. Again, if you take a look at Europe, uh, DreamHack, uh, some of you guys uh, might be familiar. I know that there's some people here from Sweden. Um, 18,000 at, at this live event and uh, 50,000 concurrent broadcast views uh, they're garnering. I want you to take a look at what's going on in the US. With BlizzCon, uh, over 25,000 watched the final alone. Um, and if you take a look at MLG, and this is the MLG season, uh, you'll take a look at 97,000 total attendees. Uh, absolutely incredible. Uh, with, uh, with 15 million uh, total viewers o over the course of their season as well. Um, so as the reach of esports expands, the target markets change, um, and as well as the, the methods of reaching them. So I want you guys to take a look at, excuse me, we'll do this. <laughs> All right. um, I apologize, guys. Um, what I want to do is I want to take a look at some examples here for a moment, if, if we could. Um, and this is examples of, of brand marketing and, and approaches that have forced them to evolve uh, with, from the esports uh, community and the way that, that gaming information is consumed. Uh, let's just say, for example, a video game consumer, excuse me, let's just say a video game consumer was faced with purchasing a new headset 10 years ago. There were just a couple factors that they, that they took into consideration when purchasing that headset. They'd be happy with a new headset as long as they were able to communicate through the microphone and as long as it, it provided quality or at least reasonable quality audio. Those, th those are the two things that matter most. <clears throat> However, this purchasing impulse and the thought process behind making the headset purchase has completely evolved 
uh, for many gamers due to the growth of eSports. Now the reasonable microphone and, and audio quality just may not be enough. We're looking for tools that allow us to optimize within the space. Can you imagine watching Euro 2012 right now, uh, tuning in and, and, and watching a soccer match and, and, and watching the guys in high heels? It just wouldn't work. <laughs> you, you have to have uh, the equipment that allows you uh, the, the best way to optimize the game itself or best way to play or, or compete within the game itself. That applies towards the use, for example, of Astro uh, headsets, Astro Gaming. Uh, the gentlemen there, they do an incredible job uh, uh, with their headphones. So gamers are constantly preparing uh, or comparing the features of a headset to others and ultimately trying to find the best possible headset based on perform performance as opposed to purpose. Uh, consumers are now turning to professional gamers for input on what would make them uh, better and more competitive within the space. I'm going to use, for example, a gamer by the name of Lunchbox. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys have heard of him, but, uh, but, but he's, he's, he's a pretty well-known gamer out there. Uh, let's just say that L Lunchbox uses in competition A40s. Uh, professional gamers are now highly influential um, to the masses regarding video game accessories and hardware. Um, he does that and, and he's actually garnered a lot of business for Astro just because he's a true user and supporter um, and, and actually uh, a spokesperson for the brand. Uh, the same is true for brands and products that are not endemic in the video game industry. Um, a good example is Dr. Pepper as I showed to you earlier and their, their sponsorship uh, with Major League Gaming. Uh, and the esports uh, community has already grown uh, in such a way that we're able to affect sales for such brands, uh, such as your popular soft drinks based upon brand support and brand activity within the professional gaming category. Uh, with the tremendous growth in, uh, and upside that esports events and, and media content have, our team at Eon Interactive uh, speaks to leverage these brand activations on a broader scale involving even a more engaging uh, and active campaign for the brands involved. Um, so when we watch TV and we actually see commercials, um, how many of those commercials translate to our community? It's very rare if ever that you guys have seen commercials that actually utilize gamers within this co commercial digitally online. I've seen athletes of all types, basketball players, soccer players, golf, tennis, uh, uh, football utilized within commercials, but when have you truly seen a gamer? Um, I assure you that this is going to change this year. Uh, you will actually start to see gaming specific commercials with those using the product within campaigns that are going to live digitally. Um, so we're certainly proud to announce that, but we're, we're looking to create community holders, purveyors of the space. Um, w when you think of certain categories, you know, your social category, you might think of a, of, 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 a Mike, uh, of a Mark Zuckerberg, or if you think of a Steve Jobs, or if you think of a Bill Gates, these are purveyors of their community. We are actually looking to, uh, to create those same type of purveyors. Um, so I'm actually going to speak with regards to ad campaigns wi 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 within our space. Um, running an ad campaign with a single style of execution is like putting all your retirement savings in one basket. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, creative diverse diversification is a relatively inexpensive cost compared to overall media budgets uh, and a properly optimized creative mix can multiply the effectiveness of your media spend several times over, but few advertisers embrace that, uh, that concept. Um, so we've all heard that engagement is the new reach, but while raw numbers are, uh, are always important, engagement analytics are quickly catching uh, catching up is equally significant. I want to show you guys some stats. This is specifically from Major League Gaming and what they're delivering through their eSports season. If you take a look, you'll see the 241,000, which represents uh, peak concurrent online view viewers uh, for their competition in Providence. So this is one competition. Uh, they, they had a, a little under a quarter million uh, concurrent. But I actually want you to look underneath that, the 3.6 million, I don't, plus million, I don't know if you can see that, but that is <coughs> the number of hours of video consumed over a pro circuit weekend. That's one weekend of a consumption of content at 3.6 million hours. Um, and if you take a look at their season, they're at 15 million. That's actually what we're grading, not necessarily the views or the clicks, but how long are we actually engaging uh, uh, clients, consumers, um, and, and fans alike. So those are numbers that 
when we speak towards engagement is the new reach. Those are the numbers that we're looking for. So within uh, eSports and the gaming live media content space, we have already reached a number of viewers, but now we're looking at, uh, at, at the stream broadcast time allowed. Uh, the longer the average time spent uh, tuning into an eSports or gaming uh, broadcast are indicative to the level of engagement. Nothing worse than watching a game and, 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 and having a lot of viewers, for example, in, in a four quarter game in the beginning of the game, but by the time you get to the fourth quarter, no one's watching. Um, eSports is very different. The analytics actually increase as tournaments or as gameplay continues, um, which, is, which is actually tremendous uh, within the space. A brand that, that funds or provides higher quality video streams from, uh, from tournaments to viewers at zero cost, brand integrations that allow fans to reach out to professional players, and just the mere support of professional players' lifestyles all influence fans and viewers to appreciate the, 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 pro the positive association with the brand. Um, and often by the time one of the campaigns, one of our campaigns or, or, one of, or, or any of the campaigns within this space finish, um, we are only using half of the sites that we initially started with. That's because of the tremendous change within the space. There may be several additional sites added uh, from the original or initial mix. Um, and this is because of, uh, as a group collectively, uh, over the decades or after running a hun hundreds of campaigns and, and having that under our, ba our belt, um, we can accurately predict that we're gonna lose about 40% of our sites, um, but also capture about a new 60 in any of our site campaigns. So agencies love to say that every campaign is different, uh, but few act as if that's truly the case. Every campaign truly is different, not because the media plans change, but because of, uh, of the thought that you can never step in the same river twice. All entities move, while nothing remains the same. This is especially true in the gaming media landscape um, and from a customer base. So as we look at the history of creative strategy, um, the definition of gamers as your nerdy kids is certainly not accurate, um, but the future of advertising certainly looks nerdy, to, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> um, our media departments act like scientists, researchers treating each campaign as a different experiment. Um, in our creative department, skilled programmers also sit side by side with designers and copywriters. Um, strategy and execu execution are no longer etched in stone. Uh, the, the, the days of simply establishing creative media plans and executing them over and over is actually dead. Uh, so direct, direct marketers have always known that every marketing effort yields two things, sales and information. Um, what doesn't work is illuminating, uh, is as illuminating as what does. So we learn from both sides of the scale. Um, it is not usual, it is not unusual, excuse, excuse me, to test uh, dozens of creative approaches at once across a hundred or more relevant digital sites. Uh, just one moment. And when people say, what are we looking to do at Eon? I wanna let you know um, the projections that are out there within the states you're looking at a few major sports. You're looking at your NBA's uh, basketball. You're looking at your NFL's. You're looking at your Major League Baseball's. UFC and mixed martial arts has, has increased tremendously. Um, but it's projected wi within the next five years or so that this community, this gaming community, is actually going to be one of the U.S. major sports. Uh, so it was captured by Forbes, uh, and, 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 and they, did, they, uh, they did speak towards the projected numbers where we are today and where we will be digitally online. It's projected that we actually have the largest gaming community, not predicted, this is a fact actually, that we have the largest gaming community digitally uh, amongst any of your majors. So we're sitting in a very comfortable place today, but the projection of where we will be tomorrow with gaming as a sport is actually incredible. Within the digital space, it's projected that as a sport, we will live as number one. Um, a, as an active sport online. So when people say, where are we? What are we looking to do? We are looking to uh, sit at the forefront as the agency to bring professional gaming um, as an actual digital sport in the States and obviously beyond. So we hope that you join us. We hope that you stand with us uh, as, as we certainly look to bring gaming alive in a slightly different format 
from a professional perspective to the world. Uh, one of the things that I do want to do is, is and, and af actually if we can switch over, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, we, we did send some stuff out, and anybody that's, that, that's tuning in online, if you have any questions uh, as, as to anything that, that I have spoken about or that I will be speaking about, please get your questions ready. We're going to ask that you ask live on Twitter uh, right now, so please um, apply that. You can do hashtag Nonic, uh, hashtag Nonic Conference, but any of your questions that, that, that will come out, um, we will certainly address those online as well. Uh, but certainly that is the future of what we're looking to do here within the pro gaming space. Uh, that's where we are, and, and, and obviously we, we've spoken a little bit about where we'd like to be. So as, as we've kind of uh, jumped over a couple things here, I, I certainly would like to open up to any questions uh, with regards to the pro gaming space, with regards to advertising marketing uh, within that space, or with regards to talent management. Any, any questions that you guys might have? Perfect. Oh, ah, no. Uh, I, I think uh, I don't like uh, this future you are presenting us. Uh, when you ask uh, if uh, we will um, believe in a uh, come now without advertisement. Uh, I feel like, uh, for, for me at least, sure, I sure. will be more engaged without advertisement than with it. Okay. Uh, I understand that uh, for uh, these uh, uh, tournaments to be free to allow uh, free, uh, watchers to see uh, good content, you might provide some kind of advertisement option. But uh, I will be glad if those eSports can uh, have the option to watch them without any ad. So pay the, by paying some kind of fee or something. But I don't think the only option goes through advertisement. Okay. I, I so think that, and, and, I, and I actually, if you can keep the mic for just one second. I think that you have to understand advertisement. I think when you, when you and correct me if I'm wrong because I don't want to speak for you. I think that when, you, when you're saying advertisement, you're strictly thinking commercials. Am I correct? No. I mean uh, banners in, maybe t uh, in the streaming. I mean uh, mm -hmm. brands inside the uh, everything. I mean, when I watch uh, some kind of uh, poker tournaments, they ask uh, people to um, use duct tape to uh, cover uh, advertisement. Okay. Because it's something that detracts from the engagement of the eSport. I think uh, advertisement and eSport should not go together. I, I believe the, uh, that's a very dark future okay. that uh, you are providing us. And I will be, I understand you can create your uh, model, mm -hmm. your business model over it, but at least provide an option for us w that we want to have uh, an option to uh, really uh, have fun with the uh, option without any other distractions. I think uh, advertisements are distraction. Okay. As a user interface guy, I uh, like, for example, Adblock Plus or okay. some kind of extension that remove the ads because I want to focus my attention in the content, not in the brands. I don't think that communication between the brands that you uh, speak of is really that engagement, that good. I believe uh, it's an option. You can do it and uh, for, for providing free content is a good uh, option, but really I believe uh, it's not good for eSports. The, the only flaw with that statement is no professional sporting organization can, can survive without an infusion of revenue, for example. And infusion of revenue comes from many different verticals. There's not, there's not any singular infusion of revenue. Now, if you look at the multiple verticals of revenue, one of those verticals, oh, <laughs> one of those verticals 
is always a brand engagement on a sports level. If you think of any, if you think of any professional sports level, just name one. If you could tell me any professional sports engagement that, a, that, that, that survives with, without an engagement of a, I'm sorry, say again, chess. Even, even, ch even chess at the highest levels of tournament where they have people that actually tune in, because that's not, I wouldn't consider that a, a professional sport from the perspective of a consumer paying to attend and on, on a major level. But chess even does have its sponsors on a major, ch if, if you're looking at a major inter international chess tournament, they have their sponsors. There are brands that, that, that are involved. Again, it's, uh, it's optimizing their engagement. I'm not saying running a pre-roll or running a mid-roll or an overlay. I actually stated not stating towards those type of commercials because it's not intrusive. It, it, excuse me, it's intrusive to your viewing pleasure. And these, these actual campaigns that we're speaking about are non-intrusive. So it's, and I hate commercials. I skip them all the time, to be quite honest with you. If something runs prior to something, unless it's something that I'm personally looking for, I typically skip them. But there are ways for, uh, for integration of brands and most of your major sports have them. I, I, I personally can't name a major sport that does not have a brand involvement. No, 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 and, and, and in some, and no, 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 and that does exist. For example, there are premium views. Premium views can remove components from them. And so there is a premium element to all of this. If you, for example, would like to tune in for free, there's one vantage point that you could view. If you'd like to view, view from a premium perspective, there's a completely different vantage point. But it's the survival of the leagues that we speak with, with regards to not having one option, but actually having the full cachet of, of, of options. Okay. Oh, yes. Well, I twittered my question up there, um, but the point to this gentleman here is there is some advertising that I've noticed placed in games which are actually part of the game. One of the games I love, like Forza 3, I like watching racing on television. The advertisements that are across like the billboards and over the overlays and along the walls, that's part of the experience when I watch it on TV. So, yeah, I mean, when you watch the racing, they've got all the different billboards and the, and the walls are lined with you know Pepsi and Rolex and everything like that. I actually believe you would do a disservice to me when I bought the Forza game if you removed all of those advertisements from the course because those advertisements are actually part of the feel. And what Microsoft has done with Forza is they've sold that advertising yes. space. Yes. So while I'm driving along and I'm going under the, the um, overpass, overpass mm -hmm. there's an Audi ad. Mm -hmm. Well, interestingly enough, if I watch the same race course. It's that same advertisement. It might be a different advertisement, mm -hmm. but there is in fact an advert mm -hmm. there. So while I, I understand what you're saying. There's a way to include advertising where the advertising actually legitimately exists as part of the environment. Like if I were in a cityscape in an MMO, and it was a game called Anarchy Online that did yes. this very well, yes. they built within their cityscapes spaces that were posters. And they sold the ad space in these poster areas, but they legitimately added character to the thing, because we live in a world with advertising. So if you, if you want a realistic experience, sometimes, now there are bad ways to do advertising, but if I saw a futuristic McDonald's ad in a futuristic game at a place where I would expect to see adverts, then that's actually pushing a brand to me in a way that's very unintrusive. So I, I just want to say, like, removing them completely from a Forza 3, you actually make a lesser game experience.
Yeah, yes. Uh, as I can say something about this, uh, it's all also a, a personal uh, view you you can have about uh, uh, about the brand. You don't have to forget that it's not only advertising, but it's only the power of the brand that uh, uh, people they some, sometimes they can want on on the game uh, as a part of the game, as, as, uh, as it's, he said. It's and sometimes uh, we, we are trying to do something similar in our game in Mangatar. Uh, there are some uh, uh, specific place we call Mangatar place uh, where uh, people can customize their their char characters. And there are some uh, uh, branded uh, uh, places where mm, uh, we are trying to, to actively involve, to engage, to emotionally engage uh, people to customize their avatar with, uh, with brands. So you can give a, 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 a hat on a t-shirt or whatever or something that uh, uh, link the, the people to the brand. And uh, a lot of time are people that are looking for from branded uh, uh, items. So y you have to consider also the people that uh, uh, are looking for, for brands. And y you know the, 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 a lot of people uh, buy the, uh, the, the, the T-shirts only for the power of the, of the mm -hmm. brand, the little brand on your shirt, but you can have the same product without brand at a, at a different cost. So you have to consider this, it's, it's, uh, it's normal. And, and, and the, the key is authenticity. I mean, we, we've heard a lot of people uh, uh, stand here today, and, and I even want to speak towards wannabe, if, 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 if I remember correctly. Um, you know, they, they actually had, if, if you remember yesterday during the presentation, a, a dog hat, for example, that's, that's a true product. Uh, that, that actually exists, and, and they created pr branding for those who might want that product, even through their campaign. As we've heard many people stand here, the key is the authenticity, um, and it, such that you're just not slapping brands just in random places that make no sense. It's got to be legitimately true. If I'm playing a racer game, and if they're racing through Times Square, I happen to be th from New York, and if they're racing through Times Square, and if there's literally brands and signs all over Times Square, for you to remove those brands because you don't like them there is not a true feel of riding through the streets of New York City. Yeah. So it's as long as it's, it's authentic, then it makes sense to, and I'm not saying that it fits for every game. Nothing fits for every situation. It's understanding and, and determining what brands are, are relevant and make sense for an opportunity to in, in, in engage and, and, and actually place a, a visible known brand with, with, within the context of that title. I hope that that worked. <laughs> okay. Dante, I was going to say also there's a, I don't know if the entrepreneur is here, a guy I met this morning that said that he created a, a website where people basically have to, or a mobile application where people have to kind of guess the brand and okay. receive 17 million downloads. Okay. Very is he nice. here? Or is he gone? Okay. It was just interesting. Well, yeah, it's very interesting. You got to introduce me to him a little bit later. <laughs> um, Log on, okay. Log on, okay, excellent. I've got to check that out. I haven't seen it. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Do I have one more question over here? Well, I Twittered a question um, okay. that came up, but I have another question while you <laughs> read the other one, which is, if I were an indie game developer and I found in my world that there would be a place for us to put a legitimate advertising piece, again, like, like the Forza model or something like that. Do you, I mean, do you think it's something like that they should should try for as an alternative like stream? It's so if I'm building a, a, a virtual world or something like okay. that, and I legitimately have a place where I could put a billboard, so it's not, you know, it's not it's like, it's integrated into yes. the gameplay. Yes, and, and, and that happens now. Yes, if you have a legitimate space where you can actually build a a branded billboard, for example, that could be an option. Is uh, there a network that they could plug into to sell that space? Um, well, basically, it's it's sold directly uh, through the actual advertiser themselves. But I, let's say I'm the indie developer and I don't know anything about it. I just have the 
you just got the allotted space. I have within the allotted your, space. How your, do I go about trying to find a place to sell that space? Well, ultimately, you would be looking for the proper agency that that's got that uh, that familiarity with the space, such as Neon Interactive. <laughs> but there you go. So you, you 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 can look for such a brand that that can speak towards, or at least has the relationships. Obviously, we're we're working with some of the largest brands in 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 the uh, in the world uh, that that are looking to place and infuse within this space. But just understanding. Uh, a brand, what they can bring towards this, the, the, the sell of that type of space and, and, and an understanding of the marketplace. So that's key. If, if you've got the space, finding the right partner that can assist you with, with fulfilling that space without it being you know, uh, uh, too over the top or, or, or too up. much overlay. Second one. Is there room for serious games in the MOG space? Is that your question? Yeah. There's, there's certainly room for serious games. Um, from a competitive standpoint, it, it, it might be somewhat of a challenge, to be, be honest with you. Um, there are certain categories that work best within this space. Obviously, your sporting games. Uh, if you look at such organizations as, as, as Virgin Gaming, uh, any of you guys that are, that are familiar with, uh, with Sir Richard Branson uh, and everything that he's doing with, with, with the Virgin uh, Empire, they actually have something called Virgin Gaming. Uh, they've partnered with EA Sports. Uh, so those sporting categories, your FIFAs and your, your, your Maddens, like those work, your, your, your shooters, um, you know, your League of Legends and, 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 and such brands that I have mentioned. Uh, uh, serious games would be something that would be uh, somewhat new um, as, as far as a strong foray. You never say no. Uh, it would be just something that would have to be explored properly. Gamers solved some protein problem a couple of months ago that a uh, bunch of researchers were trying to figure out, yeah. and they kind of yeah. threw it over to gamers, and gamers did it in well, like three days. Well, it's, it's odd. I, I can give you a couple examples, and I'm very familiar with, uh, with what you speak. Um, there, there, was the, uh, there was that challenge. There was actually a neurological challenge. It's, it's been stated that gamers, uh, because of their reactionary time, because they're looking at a screen where so much is going on, uh, they, they actually compared uh, them to other athletes, um, you know, your soccer players, your football players, so on and so forth. Um, and, and they have been coming to our industry uh, for such things. So has it happened? Absolutely. Uh, neurological testing, neurological uh, uh, result and resolve, obviously uh, uh, the, the protein components that you mentioned, they have actually come to us for serious research. Um, and, you know, we've, we've been providing to them. So it's a new frontier. Um, I, I will certainly tell you that, but has it been taking place? Yes, it certainly has, and will it continue? I think that it's actually going to come um, even at larger numbers uh, than, than we've seen already. So, excellent question. Thanks. I don't see many questions like this. Okay. So Alrighty. So, um, I think that that will conclude uh, the question. So, I, I, I want to thank you guys for having me here. Um, and, and I want to close my time with a challenge. Um, I want advertisers to realize that there's a viable op option in a non-traditional new media space, which is gaming. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and, and simultaneously, I want competitive gamers to understand that uh, the introduction of the business of play. Uh, that's what we're all here for, is the business of play. So I, I, I'd love them to understand what we're doing and, and, and how we stand to represent uh, uh, for everything that they're doing, uh, whether it be consumer or, prof or professional gamers at that point. Um, and an important thing to remember is that television uh, uh, losing viewers, losing, uh, lo losing ad dollars, um, obviously publications and newspapers are, are losing at a rapid rate. Everyone's coming to our digital space while internet-based content um, and gaming views are growing fast as, as you've seen today. So what the world looks like today um, will be very different than what the world looks like in five to six years from now. And we will all be at the forefront of that. So I congratulate all of you. And as I mentioned, I was going to uh, end this just like I started it. So no, Nick, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for, uh, for attending. And thank you to everyone that's out there streaming and watching us. Thank you. No, you have to, you have to stay up there for a second because you have to take your picture oh, with uh, Tapela. That's right. Please, 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 please,
like i just got my diploma <laughs> thank you thanks again